Oh, hi. This week I have zero focus and can't seem to get into any project other than the inventory I'm building for a market I'm doing this weekend and another one I'm doing the weekend after. So I thought I would go through my pattern collection and I'm also hoping like I'll get a little inspiration because I have so many. This is not all of them. I kind of forget what ones I have until I actually like have them in my hands. So this will be a good refresher for me and also can share with y'all. And if you have any thoughts on like, oh, I want to see you make that one. I haven't made most of my patterns. We do like a little voting situation in the comments. So uh, yeah, let me know. And if you have any of these patterns and have thoughts on them, I think we'll start with the commercial envelopes that I have. Uh, I think I'll do the ones that I have actually made already. And I also have some of my own patterns. I don't know if those are even worth showing or not. Like this is just from a, a top that I made I, I don't even know how long ago. And there will be a mix of clothing and then I don't know that I have a lot of bag patterns, but I guess we'll find out, won't we? This will be good to like have a little catalog of things. So if I'm trying to figure out what patterns I have, maybe I can just watch this bag. Not that I need to increase the amount of time that I spend looking at my own face because editing these and filming these, like I, I can see it the whole time. I will say it has been helpful into my adulthood filming myself so regularly because I have become pretty like desensitized to hearing my own voice and seeing this that I I don't critique it as hard like I'm just a person I it's just a voice it's just a face not to say I'm not harsh on myself about certain things that I don't need to be but it it is helpful to just be neutral about it oh Anyway, rather than have an existential crisis, let's move on to the actual show and tell. This is one I had set aside because the first thing I made off of here was this duffel bag. I actually made like an extra long one for specific types of equipment. And then I've made some shorter ones for gear for people and like tool bags, things like that. But I also used it to make like a little roll top bag. I've kind of Frankensteined it into a bunch of other things. If I narrowed the like tube part to just like a couple inches wide, it'd be really good for something like my Ramona flowers bag. Cause for me, the hardest part of making round bags is fitting the end pieces, like the circle bits to the tube bit. Also speaking of the Ramona flowers bag, this really sweet cosplayer tagged me on Instagram that they were using my tutorial for how to put my latest version of that, which it just made me want to do another one. It made me really happy that it helped someone figure stuff out. Not that these are like flat out tutorials and most of my videos never have been. Sometimes that is my attention going into them, like gathered skirt video I did probably a couple summers ago now, but I still get my rambles in there. So uh, you're not, you're not getting rid of the personality for better or worse. <laughs> so anyway, it just meant a lot. It did help someone and that they shared it, which was really cool. And it looked awesome. They did the movie version, which is like the army green with the light blue and it looked gorgeous. I'm not going to go on a dissertation after every single pattern. I promise one of my favorite patterns. And I've done a lot of alterations to this to make my own version. I actually have a video that I like workshopped how to make this pattern work for me and like make my dream dresses. And it's a princess seam bodice. I've tried this skirt before. I don't love it. I don't know if it's cause I'm so tall that this kind of like fitted kick pleat in the back type skirt doesn't work for me, but it, I just, I really didn't enjoy it. So making the gathered skirt, is definitely the move. I would like to try it with like a circle skirt. I think having this princess seam bodice with a multitude of other options is something I want to keep trying. I've had a lot of fun with this one. And then this is another one that I've done this specific version with a little heart right here. It's super comfortable. It's, it's a dress I wear pretty often. Most patterns and, and most dresses, most clothing I try on or make with the initial pattern as is it always hits me like basically at empire waist when it should be at my high waist, which is where I like my waistline being. Oh yeah, this is what I've used for. I don't know that I ever showed it on here. I've made a bunch of onesies before. Have I never shown any of them? I did alter this pattern like a million times doing those. And I came up with like a character hoodie is what I was calling it. And I think I did a video on that Totoro one. And I loved that. I ended up selling that at a convention because I had it as just like a show piece and I wasn't gonna sell it. And then someone was just so in love with it that I, I ended up doing it. I should 
do more of these. I personally run too hot to wear onesies because I, I felt like I was suffocating when I had one on, so not for me, but the character hoodie thing is super fun and uh, I, this is a good reminder to make more for something like Granicon. Then I have made this, but not the pants version. I should give that a try actually and see how it comes out. Listen, I came of age in the mid 2000s, so I'm, I'm a skinny jeans or die kind of person. I did make this. The skirt itself wasn't too bad, but I'm not a pinafore person. I don't know if that's because I'm small chested or what, but like meh. And that's another one. I don't think I showed me making it. There's there's a bunch I'm starting to realize that I, I never actually did videos on. And because I personally wasn't wearing them after I made them, I have sold most of them off just so they, they end up somewhere, you know? Oh, this is one I did a video on for my League of Their Own style dress. I'm very, that's one of my proudest projects I've ever done. It's right there. And I'm hoping I'll get to wear it to a baseball game this summer. I didn't do the cleanest finishing on the bodice piece because it almost has like a scalloped situation happening over here. And it's hard to like get that to sit nicely when you're putting a facing of that shaped edge. I, I found that to be a little bit tricky, but now that I've done it once, I think I would know what to look out for. So I, I would go back and do that if I were to make it again. And then the most recent commercial pattern that I used was for my Steve Bonnet cosplay, where I did the mock-up. I still really enjoyed making that corsety type thing, and I would still like to make that, but just with a different fabric, because I don't want to cut up that dress I was gonna use. I'm obsessed with how it fits. I can't believe I didn't try it on before. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's the only other one I've actually made out of like enveloped commercial patterns, but I have so many more. So that's like not a big percentage of what I have. Oh wait, and then this back one. It's, it's not a ton of them. Oh wait, just kidding. I have also tried this. I should revisit it. This is one of the first patterns I ever, ever tried. M maybe actually the first pattern I ever tried now that I'm thinking about it. And it made me really upset actually. I, I eventually finished the skirt and it ended up just being like the first gathered skirt I ever made. And I still wear it. I absolutely love it. I don't think I ever showed that in a video. I showed repairing it because I got it caught on a guardrail going to a punk show and I did, uh, rip it. It was doing this that I realized, much like some cooking recipes, it's like they intentionally leave a step out so that you can't make it exactly how it was initially made. And I find that very frustrating because it feels very gatekeepy. And I, I am not about that, as y'all know. I don't know if I just didn't understand how to read patterns very well. So I may give this one another go, but yeah, we'll see. I, I initially bought it for this coat. I was going to make myself some, some kind of something. I, I had a specific image in mind. I can't picture it now, of course. Oh, and then I have made this. I, again, didn't do a video on it. I chose the worst possible fabrics to work with. They looked really cool. It was making this because it's like a fitted button up that I realized how much ease is in a lot of commercial patterns. Kiara bought it. Thank you. I, I hope it's still holding up for you. I know my skills have only improved. You live and you learn. I wouldn't have found out if I hadn't given it a try. So I'm not upset about any of the things that I've made and didn't turn out perfect first go around. That's not how most things go. And as someone that was like, talented and gifted kid growing up. Like a lot of school stuff came easily to me. The second it didn't, I was like, it's impossible. It'll never work. And I was quick to get frustrated and just like walk out on stuff. So I'm very thankful that I haven't given up on sewing because it's my favorite thing to spend time doing. Even when it's hard and even when I'm sore, it's all I think about doing. And I'm so very, very, very grateful that I get to do this. And this is to, like today is is my first day I would normally be going into the uniform store, which was my main like part-time job. And uh, it's, it's closed now and there's just excitement. Like there's a little fear cause that's really scary, but thank you everyone that made Etsy orders over the weekend. Cause that is all I need. It's just like a handful of those a month is gonna help cover this cause in the grand scheme of things, I wasn't actually earning that much there. It felt like I was, but I'm definitely underpaid for what I do there. And uh, I wasn't actually getting that many hours. So I, I have not every confidence, but a fair amount of confidence in the fact that like with the incredible support that I have and the in-person markets I'm doing, like if these go well the next two weekends, 
I, th I think I can do this. This week there's just this like freeing, right, my time is my own for most weekdays and even when I do stuff for the brewery that's usually like afternoon and evening even though I'm horrible at actually taking downtime. If I were to take downtime it would be that part of the day and I like that I'm viewing my brewery job which is usually like pretty mentally and physically laborious. I love it. I absolutely love it but like it takes a lot out of me socially and like physically a lot of the time because I have to haul like a ton of heavy shit around. I gotta be on top of my game and making sure I'm watching everybody and making sure no one is overserved. Normally I'm just passing out samples but you know checking IDs just making sure no one's up to like any weirdness because I feel like while I am serving them they are my responsibility. I actually think legally that's how it works is I'd be responsible for something happening to anybody that I gave beer to so uh, I take it super seriously because I don't want myself to get in trouble but I don't want like the brewery to get penalized for something because they're one of my favorite businesses and I, I want them to do well but I I do think it's funny that I'm viewing working there as my like chill hangout time. <laughs> I think that's a good sign if I think about it that way though and I'm very proud of myself because at no point have I been like well I don't have a real job now. I do view this as a real job. I view my Etsy shop as a real job and these in-person markets. The time and effort I put into these things and it is all together making up my livelihood like it they are real jobs being an artist is difficult but it's also like a legitimate life choice and direction to take things so thank you for letting me do that I did not mean to get up on a soapbox but is anybody surprised probably not okay I have these organized seemingly in some particular way got this like slouchy front top I just don't know how it works so I want to try it. I used to have a couple shirts that had this effect to it and I never quite figured out how technically from an engineering standpoint you make that shape. This was actually just given to me by my fairy god Cheryl. I'm excited to try it out. I, I like figuring out the wrap top situation, how it kind of crosses over there. This is something I cut fabric out for and then something happened to it. Also not the correct type of fabric to use. It was one of the first patterns I ever got but I had cut out this like leopard print fleece which is not my style at all. <laughs> I'm not like an animal print person. You know me, stripes or die. And I also dabble in like a little houndstooth, but animal print is just never like spoken to me. Stretchy fleece is not the fabric for this. It was before I knew any better. And that was also from this bag of clothes that someone gave me. My mom and I were working a flea market table. There was stuff that this older couple next to us couldn't sell so they just gave me all the clothes because they found, found out that I sewed stuff. So I must have been like 18 or 19 and I was helping my mom just get stuff out of her apartment. That's how I ended up with that. Oh, hold on, wait a second. No, these are these are both just like crossover bom bomber jacket style things. This is actually the pattern and may have been one of the very first patterns I bought. This and that Cynthia Rowley one was the first pattern I ever attempted. This was the other one that I bought at the same time and that was the intention. Okay, I remember the shape of the garment. I just didn't remember that that was the pattern I picked. Ooh, I think this was also just given to me by my fairy god Cheryl. This is one of those things where like the design on the envelope is what sold me on it, which is not how these were like it doesn't come with the fabric shown here these are just examples of what you could make with it but something about her whole look I'm sure because it's blue is what was appealing to me looking at the actual bodices I do want to try making something like that because it's like gathered at the center and then there's a seam coming up and it looks like there's a dart coming in over here and I've never done anything like that. Much like this. I'm not like a high collar Peter Pan collar type of person. The way that this is gathered up here just looks really cool. This is another one that I thrifted. I had a dress. I thrifted this like yellow woven dress that looked like this. It was a little bigger than me and the sleeves were really long and I took it in so like I shortened the sleeves, fitted the rest of it to me. What happened to it though, I loved it and I felt like so pretty. It was one of the first times I wore a dress and was like this feels right because nothing ever fit me right so it wasn't until I started making my own clothes that I was like oh no I do like wearing like girlier things where I had never strongly identified with like feminine clothing before which what does any of that even mean but it's the first time I felt I don't know what's the term for it like gender euphoria was like oh this I love this. I love how this makes me feel. I didn't often feel that with clothes and now that I make my own I feel it all the time. It's great. Even something like this 
Like I'm, I made these sleeves the exact length that I wanted. This is a shirt I've had since I was 16 and thankfully it still fits like width wise and it's a decent length. I basically ruined, even though it's a black shirt, I ruined the underarms just cause I nervous sweat to the point that like it was irreparable damage. So turning it into this, I was able to make the collar a little bit wider than it normally would have been. And uh, yeah, I really like raglan sleeves like this and got to make it the length I want. So things like this, it's comfortable, fits me well, cause I made it for myself. And that is such a magical thing. It is so cool. Okay, can you tell I like sewing? <laughs> if 16 year old me could see where I've gone with everything, I, I think she'd just burst into tears out of absolute joy. So that's kind of a cool feeling. I feel like I'm making younger me really proud with what I'm doing these days. I loved that dress, but I had to use a laundromat because reasons. There was like a rusty situation in one of the washers and cause it was a bright yellow fabric, any, anything on it was gonna show up really prominently. I was gutted. I was so gutted after that. But when I saw this pattern, that's what it made me think of. And I do want to try to recreate that. I do think that had like a button up bodice, but the skirt wasn't button up. I don't know how that, how that closed, how that worked. Uh, I mean, this has a zipper closure in the back, but it has the collar and the zipper doesn't go all the way up. So I, I don't know how you get this on, but again, I don't know. So I want to give it a try to figure it out. That's going to be a theme with a lot of the patterns. If you haven't noticed already, it's like, I just, I don't get how it works. So I want to figure it out. And I'm a very hands-on learner. So like I kind of have to try it and even make it badly to figure out how to make it well. <laughs> this is one, I do find the layout of the bodice interesting and how it has these separate panels here and the way the pockets go in. But I did buy this for somebody else. It was a person I used to work with and they wanted me to make them a dress. So we went and picked out this pattern and then we never did anything with it. So still want to make it. All right, let's look at some vests. I think this was given to me. I, th I think so, right? I don't know if Cheryl just gave this to me or somebody else. Cause sometimes I will get other people's fabric and pattern offloads, which I love. Cause then I'll see stuff that I never would have picked out on my own and be like, I don't know how that works. And then I figure out how it works and it's really cool. This I probably bought for this one. It was a Goodwill purchase. I just, I really like how that works and I want to know how to cut the pieces to make them overlap in such a way. And I want to figure out like closure for it. Oh, and I found another pattern that I have done. I, I don't know if y'all remember it. It was a bad project. It came out poorly. Uh, I still have it, but I didn't do a very good job. I don't think same thing. Maybe it's how my brain is wired. I have a hard time with certain types of directions and like written out. I really have a hard time with it, but the fanny pack, there was something I missed along the way. And it's things like this that are why I call my videos like making chats and they're like sewing diaries or whatever instead of tutorials. Cause it's just me trying stuff out. Sometimes it is me showing you how I do a thing I've done a bunch before, but it seems like the things I do slash have done a bunch of times, I almost don't even show y'all. I have been sewing a ton of garments for these events I'm doing this weekend. And I don't think I've shown you most of the designs that I have. So that's a good mental note to have for down the road. Yeah. Anyway, similarly, I have this wrap dress. It just looks real cut. Oh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Now that I'm seeing the lines, I remember now, this is what I used for the depression robe. So I have done these two before. These need to go in a separate pile. Now that I'm like looking at these pleats happening here, I really didn't like how this looked. This is for some skirts. I feel like I either make a gathered skirt or a circle skirt. So this is just a different shape. It's a line ish, different amounts of fullness. Maybe it's like circle skirt E it looks like, but I don't know. I don't know how they get this shape. So again, I just, I want to figure it out and uh, I want to make myself more skirts and dresses because I always think I have a lot. There's so many, kinds I haven't tried. And there's so many that I like to wear that I just don't have for myself. So like why, why, oh, my stomach is grumbling. It's probably been grumbling this whole time because I haven't had breakfast yet. And it's probably what, 10, 10 30, exactly 10 30. This is definitely something I really want to make. And I'm, I'm having that thought 
well this is for like a special occasion i i can't work on this until i have like the perfect fabric for it which is bullshit let's not do that we don't need to put fabric or patterns or anything on a pedestal we are capable of making things and like that's what mock-ups are for if i don't even have fabric in mind for this so i don't know why i'm stopping myself from wanting to make it or or I want to make it but I'm not allowing myself to go down that road mentally and I need to cut that out. I'm trying really hard to be better about that and like challenging my knee-jerk reaction to things if they're not serving me anymore. And me having that thought process does not serve anybody. So this is just really pretty. I like it a lot. Yeah, doesn't need to be put on a shelf and like held in such high regard. It's a pattern. It's a pattern and I know how to make things. So let's make a thing. I'm gonna put this one like in my own way. I'm gonna put it right here. You can't see it, but it's gonna go right here so that I make this sooner than later and just keep it right in my own face. I don't see myself making a tux for, although, hold on. My partner and I have a wedding to go to this summer. I think, I think it'd be cool to try. It can't hurt. Also, I've never made a suit. Je well, okay, that's not true. I've made versions of this style coat but a lo like longer and it would be good practice as far as like doing the sleeve heads and doing the the easing it in because there's like a whole separate technique to get the shoulder to sit the way suit jacket shoulders sit with or without the uh padding that goes in there sometimes i don't know if you can see how the shoulder sits like that i know how to do it but it would probably be cool to show you and I haven't done it in like five years, so it would be good practice. Maybe I also set this aside. There is part of me that's like, ah, do I need to be making garments that aren't for something specific or someone specific just to see how it goes together and do it as like a case study? It'll be a good learning process. I really do try to like be cognizant of my use of things, be super resourceful with things, and like reuse and recycle and Frankenstein things. Anyways, on to the next set. I I just got a little overwhelmed at how many patterns I have because <laughs> we're on like the second batch of three total batches of commercial patterns. I've been given them or I have bought a couple of new ones but most of the ones I've bought myself have been thrifted and I haven't gotten rid of a single pattern that I have been given so um it, it adds up. <laughs> but this is my sick shelf, bookshelf CD rack. I used to put my CDs on here uh, that I that I decoupaged and made myself in woodshop when I was in seventh or eighth grade. Very proud of that. Actually, this is the other woodshop project that I use daily. Uh, I have a little, little footstool and I made my own design for it because most people either did really rounded ends or it was like square with rounded corners and that was as creative as they got but I like won a tech award for this because my woodshop teacher was just so excited that I like created a new thing and listen I didn't reinvent the wheel but you know I had fun with it and then I decorated it with some Suzy Q stickers. My mom worked at Michael's Arts and Crafts for a long time so things like decoupaging scrapbooking stickers I had too many of for no reason this is one of the only times I actually used some of my collection. <laughs> anyway, let's go through these real quick. Got hat and scarf. This seems fairly uninteresting. I've made a bomber hat, but it was with the Threadbanger video from over a decade ago. It has to be. It has to, probably closer to 15 years ago. Wow. Oh, that made me feel old. But yeah, they did a bomber hat video and that was the first time I ever printed off a pattern and I definitely didn't size it right. I have a very big melon and uh, thankfully someone I was hanging out with the week I made it had a teeny tiny head and I gave it to her and it fit her wonderfully. But again, another thing I never filmed. Was I even doing videos back then? I don't think I was. Was I? I think I was, but they weren't like sewing nerd videos. Anyway, a bunch of random hats. I've never made a single one of these. I'm not a hat person. Uh, maybe for costumes, I suppose. There's like a turban on here and then this wide brim hat and then some skull caps. I suppose, right? Like if it's cold out, I will wear like a knit 
skull cap. This, I bought this because I would like to one day figure out how to make my own underwear. I mean, I've made bottoms before, but I've never made bras. It's definitely on my list of things that I want to figure out so that I don't have to buy them anymore. But when I had that rung up at the register at a Joann's, the way the woman reacted, like, like she was upset that that was something I would, per like a person would purchase, even though it's sold in their store and it's underwear. Oh, and Bert's awake. Okay, Bert needed to party, so we just went for a walk, and uh, he's having his breakfast now. Also, he eats too fast, so we started giving him like a little breakfast puzzle, so he might might hear that, so he doesn't make himself sick because he just doesn't know how to restrain himself, which I get. All right, where were we? Right, the scandalous part of my uh, pattern collection. Here's here's some more underwear that. I think this must have been a thrift store find. Bathrobe, lingerie. There's a lot in here. This is a beefy goddamn pattern envelope. The bathrobe and like this top, like there's no shoulder seams. So I don't know how that's cut and put together. I just, I wanna figure it out. If this doesn't scream 2000s youth to you, um, I don't know what does. I want, I wanna try to make it not so much this, but something like this could be fun. Yeah, a longer one. I would like to make a longer one. It's called a corset. I, I know that's probably not actually accurate. This was definitely a case of, oh, I really like the fabric that they did on the front and didn't necessarily care about the dress. Something got messed up with the printing. So it's like really hard on the eyes. Houndstooth is already kind of difficult, but it has like raglan cap sleeves. Hi, floppy boy. Oh my goodness. I'm excited to see you. Yeah, you're a good boy. Hey. No stinky kisses. Oh, 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 we gonna fight? Oh, we gonna fight? He wanna wrestle? He is full of piss and vinegar this morning. Oh, I think he's asking to be put on the couch. Pardon me. Okay, speaking of raglan sleeves, this also has a V-neck, which I've attempted a couple times and it's never come out nice. So hopefully that will help give some instructions. I love both of these outfits. Again, not animal print for me. I would absolutely try making these little like cigarette pants. Now, when I bought this, I absolutely wouldn't have, but I'm also not like a mermaid skirt person. I've never tried it, but the way it comes in at the knees, I can't see that as being an enjoyable thing to wear, but I've never tried it, so might as well. And I do like these tops. I don't think when I bought this, cause I was probably like 20 or 18 or something, I don't think I would have been on board with wearing either of these. They're real pretty, so I want to give it a try. Then this was definitely something someone gave me, which is children's vests. Oh yeah, there's like, there's a whole stash of kids stuff. I think I actually have used some of these for like friends kids. Oh, this is another like onesie pattern. It looks like it covers adults. And then Star Trek specific, listen, I watched it a bit at my grandparents' house, but it wasn't anything I ever like got into. Whenever I think of Jean-Luc Picard, go back to a place of being really anxious because I desperately just wanted to play a Super Nintendo that my Nana had. She was like so on top of video games. She was the first person I ever knew that had a PlayStation. It's not like they were rolling in money or anything. She just really, really liked games. Her and my grandfather, I, yeah, it, it was, very cool of them and I, I always thought it was really rad but yeah they were the only ones I knew that had a Super Nintendo and then an N64 and then a PS1. I was a kid so obviously that's all I wanted to play so me and my brother would like dare each other to ask. They weren't scary grandparents or anything. They never like threatened to hit us and me in particular I was very quiet, very goody two-shoes, was very well behaved like to a fault especially around my grandparents. I just wanted to hang out and play cribbage a lot of the time. So I was basically like a tiny old man hanging out with them just in a eight year old's body. Unless they were actively watching Columbo or Star Trek, they didn't mind me and my brother playing. I understand adults being hesitant to let kids play something like an expensive gaming system. Totally get it. But I was usually trusted with those things. I was small. All my actions were very small. Like I was big, loud, and obnoxious when I was little, little, but then uh, it essentially got beaten out of me. <laughs> so I just was a shell of a kid. You know, listen, we're unpacking things in therapy and uh, I let myself be me a lot more now. The past like 15 years of my life have basically been training myself to unmask those behaviors. That's why this is a helpful outlet so I can get an hour or two of talking out of the way a week, keep my hands busy and just like get some energy out of my system. It, it is genuinely helpful and I really appreciate people that either have similar wirings in their brains to me or not just uh, 
being accepting of that. So thank you for being here. Being excited with me about stuff. That's what I like about this whole community. You get to nerd out about things and like I can share stuff with you and y'all share stuff with me. And I feel so privileged that that is a thing I get to do every week. So anyway, costumes. There's a, there's a whole bag that's just costumes. We will get into it in a second. I just like the, the shirt dress that she's wearing regardless of the Starfleet. Is that what that's called? I don't know if that's what that's called. Also, I know different colors mean different occupations, but I think that's the extent of my knowledge. Leonard Nimoy was in it. I don't think I can tell you what his character's name was. LeVar Burton was in it, and I can picture he had the scanner thing. I don't remember what his character's name was. That probably exhausts my knowledge of Star Trek. Okay, wow, wow, wow. Okay, speaking of growing up and coming of age in, in the era that I did, can we talk about these? <laughs> this also just screams late 90s, early 2000s to me. Oh, is this a photo of the cast of my so-called life? I think this was given to me amongst a number of these patterns by my lovely friend, Crafty Grant. I'll tag their channel here. They stream on Switch. Switch? They stream on Twitch all the time. I recommend if you want video game hangs or crafty hangs, like artsy hangs, they are your person. If you've been around the channel for a while, you'll probably already know them to start with. All right, I am a pretty straight sized person. So like other than length of things, I can go into a store and find something at least like to start with. And I'm curious what the differences are in making these types of pants for plus sizes versus the straight sizing. There's ways to size up. I know that only works for so many inches of adjustment. So I wanna know how to turn patterns into plus size ones. And yeah, I, I don't know if they're like, it's a swimsuit leotard situation. What are we calling? Oh yeah, it is a bathing suit and a bathing skirt. Oh, like a little cover up. Got it. I hate bathing suits that like right up your cheeks. Nothing ever fits my butt in that regard. So I always like a little skirted situation. Or listen, for many, many years in my teen years and early twenties, I only wore workout shorts and a tank top bra on underneath like that's what I swam in because I was so deeply uncomfortable with all of me. I only in recent years was okay with wearing even a one piece with a skirted bottom and now I have my first two piece bathing suit since I was like 10. I had one and it had Sylvester and Tweety Bird on it. Having little little skirt cover ups and stuff like I am I'm all for it if that's what gets you comfortable. It gets hot. We don't have air conditioning here so being able to go in the pool is like kind of important which I didn't grow up with air conditioning and did not have access to a pool so that that is like huge for me and I used to not let myself do it. Brains are dicks man. I don't know if this was helpful or if I'm just talking nonsense. Ah oh, perfect for me a father and son outfit. <laughs> These types of things, like button up shirts, to me, they feel more difficult to make. I've literally made hundreds of them. When I think about it, I'm still like, oh, that feels too hard. It, it being hard doesn't mean I can't make it. And also it's just tedious more than anything. Once I'm in the rhythm of like making a bunch of buttonholes, it's kind of fun. And then cutting them all open. I love cutting them open. Oh, it's the best. And then some pajamas. Ooh, we go this way. Oh, and bathrobes, more fancy menswear. I've certainly never made a cummerbund before. I thought this was a skirt. I used to be very into polka dots and now I do not like them. That's a fun revelation to have. I don't have much in the way of polka dot fabric. I have some, but it's probably just gonna end up being mock-up fabric. Anyways, dog things, there are dog things. I have made my own dog coats before, but I've never used a pattern for it. I've, I've made a couple different kinds. What is, oh. Oh, good to know I do actually keep these things. Oh wow, I've been doing this so long that uh, my memory card is full, which is alarming. We'll do this quick and jump into the last section. I know I had mentioned, or maybe I cut that part out where I was gonna show you my like independent printed out self-drafted patterns that I still have to tape together. So if you want to see that, I'm more than happy to share. And I have like a really great storage solution for those patterns I'm very excited about, but I have more to add to that. I think having that as like a part two, maybe. The other thing I thought about is only if y'all want, you do a part three as well and go through my sewing books because I have a bunch and there are some that I have done every project in and some that I haven't touched any of them, even though I've had them for a long time. Or like 
repeatedly borrow them from the library and then someone was like, I'm just gonna buy this for you for Christmas. But the thing I was about to show you is I had a Ziploc bag full of all those little free ones from Michaels and Joann's that you can just like pull off the things. Like, good for inspiration. I don't know that I've ever followed one of these, but they're, they're worse things to, to have. I'm better about not taking them if it's not something I'm gonna do, but when I first started crocheting, which I haven't done since our last live stream, which was like a couple months ago by this point, so sorry about that. If there's a certain day of the week that works better for y'all, let me know and we will figure it out. Anyways, I have this absolutely delightful glittery bag with a little measuring tape. It has Jack Jack and Gus Gus. And this is the perfect size for pattern envelopes. And uh, this is where all my costume pattern lives. Costume patterns live. That's how words work. So there's a bunch of these. I think all of these were given to me by Crafty Grant. So thank you for this whole stash. There's some like really fun ones. Little Me. I don't know why they're standing like they are, but was all about medieval garb and like the flowy fantasy type outfits. So I've got some kilts happening. These, which I don't know what this falls into. Tudor costumes. Okay. I was like, that's a very specific look going on there. Look at those high-waisted pants. I love a good high-waisted pant. We got a cape, another cape, and then this is amazing. This is amazing. I've never made a trench coat. Yeah, these, which are just Renaissance. All right. I mean, I guess that gives a specific vibe. And then some like femme Celtic stuff. Love it very much. And then what's it? Oh, just a different set size of the kilt one. So yeah, this was a good reminder to go through all of these. Again, I, I know I have a lot. I don't know what the actual count was. And if there's something I showed you that you want close up picture of the envelope or just like the pattern number, if you want to see my independent pattern company patterns and some stuff I've drafted myself and the ones that I have printed out but haven't put together, including the like cochleette skirt that I've seen a bunch of people making. It's like an adjustable skirt and it looks so fun and I want to make it real bad. If there's anything here that you just really, really want to see me make, please let me know because I get overwhelmed by the options and then I just won't pick one. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to do. I guess I won't do any. So yeah, I hope this was interesting. I'm nosy, so I really like seeing what people have for their collections. If I have like any of the same ones, I, I definitely do that. Or just something similar or, oh, I never even would have thought of a design line there, like making a bodice that way or any of that stuff. I have definitely sought out specific patterns, more the independent ones that I like bought and then printed out from seeing someone else make it online and post about it slash share the pattern in a video. It's gotten me to, uh, do some of that. So I'm, I'm that much more excited about that pattern video because you'll just by virtue be supporting smaller businesses and like who, who doesn't love that? Speaking of small businesses, I have been posting new stuff in my Etsy shop, but if you're seeing this the day it comes out and you want to get something before I head to my event tomorrow or in this upcoming week, I think the event I have on the 10th, it's Portsmouth Market Day out in Port Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I can't words today. I feel like that's going to have a pretty big turnout as long as the weather is nice. I have high hopes for it. I don't want to put like all my eggs in one basket, which I know I'm not doing because I have multiple markets coming up. I have a lot riding on these next two because if I can pull them off, because they're fun to do, they're exhausting and they're a lot of work, but they're fun to do. I did make a number of Etsy sales over the weekend, which was amazing. And uh, I got star seller again. Well, Unless something wild happens in the next like 48 hours, I will have star seller for next month, which I, I don't know that it matters. It's not like I've seen any increase in sales. Almost all of my sales are from y'all, which I can't thank you enough for. So it's nice having like a monthly goal to try to hit, but it's also like unnecessary pressure I put on myself to, to keep that little marker. I don't know. I, I, we, we don't have to go down that rabbit hole. In addition to support over on my Etsy, it is only because of everybody over on Patreon that I, I get to do this. Normally I'd be in really frustrating and honestly scary these days traffic getting home from the uniform store. Again, ev everyone over on Patreon, y'all have been keeping me afloat this entire time and made it possible for this to even be an option for me. And 
getting the industrial. Like I had part of the cost of it squirreled away. So many of y'all have been around for years now and um, I can't believe how lucky I am to have y'all in my corner. So thank you everybody. I am super appreciative of this little corner of the internet. So before I go completely deep in the cheese, I'm gonna end this here, go make some breakfast. I will not be here next Friday because again, I have hopefully what will be a very big event. I will put date information, hopefully up here for what I'm doing tomorrow. If you're seeing this the day it comes out, I'll be at, at Concord Art Market. And then yeah, Portsmouth Market Day is like the one big, outdoor event that they do every summer and I've always wanted to go like as an attendee because Portsmouth is one of my favorite places in the world. I'm so looking forward to being a part of it. I honestly like still can't quite believe I got accepted to be a vendor there because I feel like it's a very high bar that they have. So I will be back here in two Fridays with another video. Thank you so much for hanging out. Interesting. It's funny how my memory is not great, <laughs> which is not something I enjoy wearing to start with. So I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. My face is my face. I sound how I sound. How many times am I gonna point to the wrong side? For once, I had a good perception of the time. Look at me go.